Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. How to make a knife with a glass bead finish, including a hybrid handle, which are made out of wood and fiberglass resin. Now, doing a glass bead finish sounds pretty simple, uh, but there was actually a couple tricks to it, um, and I, I learned the hard way. Um, I wanted to craft a knife that had this dull matte finish, uh, but I also wanted to have some designs on the spine of the knife, and I also wanted to have my logo uh, be readable. In addition to that, I wanted to play around uh, with a different type of, of wood handle or scales. So this really isn't a, a true do-it-yourself video. It's really, for me, a kind of a proof of concept uh, video. Um, this is the, the trial knife that I'm going to try out these two different techniques on. Um, the blank that I chose is a small Skinner. I, I've got these in stock. I had a company uh, locally, uh, Long Island Water Jet out in Bohemia, uh, Long Island, New York, um, cut these for me. Uh, they're cut out of 1095 high carbon steel. Um, the Water Jet cut out the blanks you know, very, very quickly. All of the blanks are the same um, outside shape and size. and they're all 3 16 thick, uh, so it's a, it's a good meaty blade, feels nice in your hand, and it was a, it was a good little blade to try out um, the glass bead finish as well as this hybrid handle. And I've already finished uh, one of these as a video, so I'm certainly not going to cover the whole build on, on this little video. Um, I put a link up to the last one that shows all of the grinding and the bevel cuts, etc. Like a Real basically, the bevels are done just like uh, most of my videos are. I'm using a, a belt sander with a bevel plunge jig and a bevel uh, angle jig. Um, and, and you basically just go back and forth and, and grind the bevel of the knife. It doesn't take very long at all, um, all depending on the, the quality of your uh, belt sander and the quality of your jigs. I think I've mentioned this before, but some people uh, do this freehand um, and other, other people use a jig. I'm, I'm one of those people that uses a jig in order to get the straight bevel lines. But anyway, once the bevel is ground on the knife. It would be then time to polish it and then harden it and then uh, temper it. In this case, we're gonna go um, after the bevels. We're gonna um, harden and temper and then I'm gonna go bring it to a friend shop and just glass bead uh, the entire blade. Before I do that, let's go back one knife. This is a drop point knife. This was the first knife that I attempted uh, to do a glass bead finish on. And then I had the bright idea of, after glass beading it, uh, to add my maker's mark, uh, which is electrical, uh, electro etched into the blade. Um, and I realized as soon as I did it that I usually polish my maker's mark uh, after I etch it. So I use, you know, like a 1500 grit paper to polish it to make it look good. I can't do that on a glass bead finish because I would sand away some of the glass bead or some of the some of that dull matte finish. Um, so basically, you know, I almost ruined this knife. I was able to save it. I did a, a different video, but but basically, I had to sand away all of the glass bead finish, polish the blade, and uh, re recreate uh, the maker's mark uh, in the correct spot. So let's get back to the current project. Um, I wanted to have the maker's mark. What I did was I polished the portion of the blade that the maker's mark is going to go on, and then I etched that in place. I have a separate video on, on etching maker's marks. Pretty simple process. Once it was etched, I polished it as I normally do with 1500 grit paper. That gives me a, a, a nice little maker's mark logo that's very legible. And now what I did was I took some clear uh, vinyl and I created a, um, a covering for that maker's mark. And I put a couple of layers on it. While I was doing that, I also used some blue tape and I put it on the spine and cut out a design. The thought here is just like doing etching. Um, whatever I glass bead, whatever is um, underneath that tape will stay shiny. This is my friend's glass bead machine. Uh, the knife is inside and I didn't video the process, but, but it's very fast. 
after um, I glass bead the finish, you notice the entire blade is that dull matte finish that I was looking for, very uh, industrial looking finish. And then it's just a matter of peeling uh, the vinyl and peeling the tape in order to expose the, the shiny logo as well as the shiny, the shiny uh, spine design. Can't really call it spine etching or uh, spine file work, but it is pretty cool um, to have a design created with that glass bead machine. So this is a, a picture of the logo um, on the glass bead finish. I was pretty happy with that. And then the, these are the designs I created with tape. Um, this is after the tape has been removed, of course. So now that the blade is basically finished, except for sharpening, I'm gonna move on to the spines. Now I used a piece of maple um, that I had in the backyard and I just cut a couple of um, pieces out of it. What I was really looking for was those worm-eaten um, section in the middle of that maple. I cut a couple small slivers of that, I put it in a small Tupperware container, and then I mixed some fiberglass resin. I added a few drops of blue paint, and I'm gonna mix that very well into the resin. I have not added the hardener yet. And the concept here is to be able to pour this into all of those wormholes. This is silver um, sparkles that I got down at Michael's Arts and Crafts Supply. I'm gonna mix that in with the resin also. Um, anyway, this hybrid handle, I wanted to come up with an equivalent or, or something similar uh, to the hybrids that you see that are made out of alumilite uh, that create that um, you know require a vacuum chamber and, and you know quite a little bit of, of knowledge to create. This is a much simpler process. Um, fiberglass resin mixed with a little bit of whatever color paint you want, and then I added some sparkles um, to give it a little bit more. Um, thicker consistency and also to add some um, some additional flash in the finished product. I then mixed in the hardener and I'm just going to pour it into each one of those uh, wormholes um, in that in those pieces of maple. But you could cut slots in a piece of wood. You could you could use a router and um, create any design that you want and then fill it in in the same manner. Um, and you can mix this resin with any color paint that you want. Uh, or with any color sparkles that you want. This is the finished product uh, after they were sanded off um, and polished a little bit. I did throw the wood into some um, polyurethane mixed with paint thinner uh, so that it would absorb deep into the wood just to preserve the wood so it didn't crack in the future. Um, then I cut out the scales into the um, shape of uh, the knife handle. Um, Unlike most of the knives I do, I usually put the knives, I, I cut the scales oversize and then I kind of um, sand them uh, to shape when, once they're mounted. When you're doing a glass bead finished knife, you can't do that. You've got to cut out the scales perfectly so that when you mount them, they really don't need any additional grinding or any additional forming because you don't want to damage uh, the glass bead finish on uh, the tang or on the spine of the knife. So this is just a test fit, um, trying each handle uh, in place with the brass pins that will hold them in place. Uh, the final fit will be with a, um, a two-part epoxy, but these scales fit pretty nicely. So I'm going to tape up the blade so I don't get any epoxy on that. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of epoxy in the middle, and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I don't get too much on either the blade or the spine because uh, I really don't know how I'll get it off of that glass bead finish if I do get any of the epoxy there. So this is um, just pinning and gluing uh, the scales onto the blade. I've used some painter's tape on the, on the blade itself. Two-part epoxy. I did mix a little bit of black paint uh, in with that epoxy. And then I'm gonna clamp uh, these scales in place and I'll leave them uh, for a good 24 hours before I unclamp it. Um, and then really all I have to do is, is uh, cut down the excess um, brass pins, the length of the brass pins, and do a little final sanding on just the face of each side of the scales.
So now that epoxy is dry, I'm just doing a little uh, finish sanding. And I sand it, I think, with a with a 400 um, and then an 1800. Uh, sorry, a 400 and then an 800 grit sandpaper. And then I did actually put it on the buffing wheel, and just buffed out a shine. So this was actually a, a very simple little knife to make. It was made, um, as I said before, from a uh, 1095 high carbon steel blank. Uh, these are available on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Um, the blade has a glass bead, a dull matte glass bead finish, and the scales are made from a hybrid wood and fiberglass um, resin. Very simple, very easy project. It has some uh, kind of unique design in the spine, also created with the glass bead machine. And just a unique looking little knife. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Thank you.